Okay, so I'm in desperate need to really clean my room right now. Desk is a mess. Not too bad, but it's a bit hectic. I got more makeup over here. Did get some new shoes from Vivaya and they are kindly sponsoring a shorts video that I'm going to make. My plants, which are going a bit crazy. This was actually a basil. It's for house plants. Okay, so today I'm in Carnaby and I'm going to meet up with a friend. She came all the way from Hong Kong and we're going to get something to eat. I haven't used my Dyson Airwrap in such a long time and usually I'm quite lazy to do like nice curls like this today and I think it turned out pretty nicely and it was actually faster than I thought. Last time I did it I think it took me a bit too long. I think now that I have shorter hair it's a lot easier. So now let's go in with my skincare. So I'm first using the Naturi Hadamogi Skin Conditioner and then just apply onto the face. So this is really good if you're acne prone skin like me but also have dry skin type third layer. I think my skin is more hydrated and freshened up. So the next one I'm going to go in with is the Kiehl's Hydro Plumping Serum Concentrate. This one is using glycerin to hydrate. And then because my skin is being really dry, I'm going in with the B Glen Damascus Rose Oil and Serum. This one is a new discovery from me. I got this when I was in Hong Kong and it's a really beautiful serum. This underneath makeup just looks amazing. And then I go straight into sunscreen. This is the Haru Haru Wonder Black Rice Moisture Airy Fit Daily Sunscreen SPF 50. It's a really moisturizing one. So if you are dry skin type, then this one is really, really nice. It is a creamy texture and it works really nice as a moisturizer and a sunscreen. And that's my skincare. Favourite but oldie blush, Hamic Powder. I'm going through these so quickly. It's my lunch. It's very late lunch. It's like 4.11. Just some simple soup noodles here. I need to deep clean my brushes. It's just that time of the week. So let's go. All my gunky makeup brushes on I'm gonna use my Isoclean Varsit. They are nice and clean. So all I do now is just I line them all up. I fold them like this and then I just wrap it all the way. And then I tend to just store it upside down so that the brushes are all just drip drying all the way down. So everything's now clean, bed is clean, plants are watered, desk is clean, everything's dust free. I just feel everything's much more clearer and sometimes it just feels so much nicer just to have a clear place, a clear sense of mind, and I just love that cleaning aspect for me. So the topic of conversation right now in the luxury space is about the Hermes lawsuit and how I think two ladies failed to buy Birkin bags so they sued. This is nothing new in the Hermes space where there's always been the journey or the game or how to score a Hermes bag. Personally, getting a Hermes Birkin or a Kelly has not been something on my radar because I'm just not really that interested in it but I do see it's 
big complexity when it comes to trying to score one of these bags where you have to do a separate purchase of the other items, trying to get on the good side of a lot of the sales associates to be able to buy a Birkin bag. And now all of these games, it does mind boggle me a lot. So the lawsuit says that Cavallari has spent tens and thousands of dollars at Hermes and have been coerced into purchasing other Hermes items described as ancillary products before she was given a chance to buy a Birkin bag. And I can see the point that sales associates have to make their money, they make their sales, they get the commission from it. And with Hermes, Kellys and Birkins, they don't make any commission from them. It does make sense that the incentive to sell the other items it is a big part of their job. Now, the part where it becomes illegal is tying the purchase of another item to be able to purchase the item that you want. Now, I'm based in the UK, so I don't know what the laws are in America compared to here. And the lawyer involved in this suit says they're preconditioning buying other products, scarves, belts, shoes, perfume, jewelry, before they can give you the opportunity to buy Birkin or Kelly. The thing is, it's not really anything new. And what mind boggles me is that when you want to shop at a shop like this, you've already been told the expectation that this is going to happen. It is a game. It is something that's unknown. You're not going to be guaranteed anything. You spending your money in those shops, it's really down to you. You're the one who's putting the money down. That to me is your responsibility as the consumer. The part where I'm not okay with is when the sales associate keeps leading you on, keeps making you purchase time and time again, and then all of these purchases lead to nowhere because this is what happens a lot of the time. Now I'm okay when they say, okay, you need to buy a scarf, you need to buy some plates today, and then I can offer you the Birkin because at least it's clear cut and you know what you're expecting. It's just when it's never ending, that's when I am not okay with it. And for those who really want to have those bags, and that's not really necessarily a game that someone wants to always play in the luxury realm. To me personally, I don't see that as a luxury experience, but funnily, it does actually make people to egg on and buy a lot of products from the brand because they are incentivized to do so. Even though it's an incentive that makes you feel really bitter and angry, people still buy out of revenge. For me, I tend not to be the angry type. I like to feel comfortable and at peace when I'm shopping. If someone did treat me this way, then I would of course just stop shopping at that store. Now, where do I see this in the luxury space? I know Chanel with their classic flaps, they're heading in that direction as well. So I do wonder how this lawsuit is going to play out. I do hear a lot of stories that the Chanel classic flap is going into the same game where you have to play all these games to be able to buy one now. They've made a false sense of scarcity for those bags. So I don't know whether this lawsuit might actually change the opinion of what's going to happen with the Chanel classic flap. But then again, they're also becoming ridiculously expensive. So that's another topic as well. They've also got another price increase coming up. So now the small classic flap is going for 8,500, which is insane. So do let me know in the comments down below what you think. What do you think about Hermes bags in general? Are you willing to play the game or not? And what do you think is going to happen in the luxury space? But personally, I've been one to always purchase bags that I love to wear, whether it's designer, whether it's not, whether it's medium, like a Samantha Dalvaza bag, which was my first ever nice bag that I've bought. Your money is your voting power. You choose what you want to buy. And if the intention for you to buy an Hermes bag out of pure anger or revenge that you don't get the right treatment or not, then I'm not sure whether you really actually want the bag or not. Buy what you want buy what you need and if you can't get it maybe it's not worth going through that experience to get it. So Steph got me a really cute chocolate from this beautiful store. It was wrapped so cute, so adorable, I love it. She's so sweet to have given me this. So because this is Easter weekend she did decide to get me some chocolates. This is really cute little egg box. This is honestly the cutest packaging ever. Our little eggies just try one of these. I think I'll just go for the first one. Just really cute little eggs. Thank you for watching today and happy Easter. Bye!